Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the introductory lecture of advanced study in structural design of foundations as per IS code online course. So this is the first lecture and in this lecture we are going to see a, a basic about foundations. Uh, all of us know what foundation is. So we are going to just uh, introduce ourselves with foundation systems. Uh, we are going to see the geotechnical study why it is required for designing a foundation. We will also see a simple uh, geotechnical investigation report or you can say soil report. What are the things as a structural engineer we need to see in it and we will also uh, get to know about the course syllabus what are the things we are going to learn in this particular course so it's just about uh, the whole course we are going to see in this particular lecture so let's get started so uh, first of all the heading if you see it is very clear importance of geotechnical study so before getting into uh, importance of geotechnical study if we i have just added few uh, you can say images here just for your uh, you can say understanding uh, all of us already know that what foundation is but still uh, let me just uh, tell it say it again to you suppose we have a small building we have a uh, you can say uh, uh, let us tower we have a very tall building like burj khalifa or uh, we ourselves so whoever is there standing okay so standing still so we are standing on the ground okay we are standing on the ground and if we want to stand on the ground then we need a foot so if you see a uh, human being we have a foot and the whole load the total load of our body is being transferred through the foot to the uh, to the ground level right so if we do not have this foot uh, uh, on the ground then we will not be able to stand right so the same is applicable to all the structures uh, if you see a small building we have this kind of pad uh, acting as a foot for the for the whole structure which is uh, transferring the whole load that is coming up from the from the uh, you can say from the structure above and it is transferring to the ground so ground is the thing which is taking all the loads uh, from us and uh, helping us to stand still right so if these foot foots we have or you can say these foundation pads these are not stable or these are not there uh, to transfer that load or you can say of our body or the whole structure then in that case in that case the load will not be like we will not be able to transfer the load to the i can say ground uh, properly and in that case we will not be able to stand also properly right so it's just a uh, you can say basic thing i'm talking about we all of us know what foundation is what is the work of foundation so if you see here i have added one small building we have a small you can say uh, pad footings where the uh, you can say load is being transferred through the pad footing to the ground level here we have a lettuce tower and here you can see some uh, you can say uh, pile foundations so these are the deep foundations. So all of us have heard about pile foundations but in this lecture we are going to discuss about it we will get to learn how to design uh, the structural design of pile foundations and uh, you can say the pile caps that need to be you can say there at the top how we will be designing those so here you can see the pile foundation so through this also we can uh, transfer the load to the ground below and uh, uh, thus we can make the tower stand still even even the tallest building in the world and uh, it is the burj khalifa it is also require uh, a huge foundation and it, this is basically a pile cap having uh, a huge number of piles at the bottom if you see here it is uh, very very uh, you can say uh, uh, huge number of uh, pile found you can say piles are being used and at the top we have a pile cap so this pile cap is be actually transferring the loads equally to the piles okay uh, from which is which is coming from the superstructure or the uh, structure above so whatever uh, foundation type we are going to learn about the foundation type later on in, the, in this uh, when we'll be uh, you can say progressing towards our uh, different other lectures so now whatever uh, you can say foundation system we we know or uh, we have heard about so all the foundation strip systems are uh, ultimately going to sit on the ground and transfer the load to the ground right so 
if we do not know how the ground or how the soil is going to behave uh, under this loading conditions when the load is uh, being transferred to the soil so in that case we will not be able to identify which type of foundation system we should be using for our particular structure so so for that geodetical study or investigation of the soil subsurface or the soil surface uh, it is very important okay so that's why the geotechnical uh, as i have written here what is the importance of geotechnical study so if we do not know how this uh, the the soil below is going to behave under the loading condition then in that case you will not be or as a structural engineer will not be able to decide what type of uh, foundation system we need to use and will not be able to even decide how the foundation system we are going to design because uh, based on the uh, soil reactions only we are going to uh, finalize our structural design also right so we need to have a, uh, a tentative or you can say basic idea about how soil is going to behave so basically the first design that will be done for the foundation is the soil design of foundation and uh, 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 the fundamental uh, requirement that we will be uh, having uh, regarding the design of foundation is the bearing pressure or how the soil strata is going to resist the loads so that will be done by the geotechnical engineers right so the geotechnical engineers will give some recommendation regarding the foundation type or regarding uh, what are the uh, you can say available bearing capacity at, at a particular area and taking those values we will be designing our uh, foundation or or you can say we will be performing the structural design of foundation so the first thing uh, before jumping into the foundation uh, design that we will be requiring is the geotechnical study of that particular uh, soil or you can say the particular area uh, 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 where we are going to construct our project or you can say construct our building or whatever structure it is right so as i have said that we uh, if we consider the whole structure as a human body so the foots are basically the uh, you can say uh, the foundation which is transferring the load to the uh, ground and also it is providing a stability to still uh, i can say stand still on the ground right so in foundation not only uh, you can say the structural design or you can say not only the soil design the stability of uh, of the superstructure is also depending on the foundation actually right so uh, now uh, you you might have seen that uh, whenever uh, we are talking about a project or you can say we are talking about uh, soil investigation multiple uh, at multiple places for one particular project there are uh, multiple uh, places we are going to uh, say test the soil or you can say we are going to make the boreholes to collect the soil samples okay so that means we'll be digging up uh, this uh, soil surface and we'll be collecting the soil sample from different depth now why it is required because uh, suppose if you see uh, we are going to construct one building here one structure here it, this is my whole plot area and we are going to construct another uh, building here right we are going to construct one underground facility here we are going to construct another underground facility here suppose right so if you see this is the whole plot area but if you see the cross section of that uh, soil subsurface or you can say the uh, soil layers in at different zones at different depths we are having different type of soil right so suppose you have just done one testing here and you have got some sample about sandy gravel uh, at, the, at a particular depth but if you consider that yes at this at the, this particular place also or this particular place also will be having the same kind of soil and uh, you are suppose whatever data you have got from this particular borehole suppose this is my borehole one okay so the soil sample which is collected from borehole one if you consider the same data for this particular area also so you will be doing it wrong because here if you see the type of soil is uh, silt or you can say silty sand but in this particular area it is sandy gravel so obviously there are different types of soil and the behavior of these two types of soil will be very different right so that's why in a particular uh, project when it is a huge project or multiple structures we are going to build on the uh, plot so in that case multiple uh, boreholes are uh, being digged and the soil samples are uh, you can say collected and then the geotechnical investigation is being done both in uh, you can say 
uh, uh, I can say in laboratory and also in the uh, I can say site right on site what are the things we are basically doing so whenever I am talking about this uh, uh, borehole so uh, there are very popular uh, uh, you can say soil investigation method uh, which is the standard penetration test is being done and uh, uh, also the laboratory tests are being done okay so these two methods are actually being used one is the uh, on-site method another one is the laboratory tests right so both will be uh, the geotechnical engineers will be using to investigate the different uh, parameters of the soil and ultimately giving us uh, the output uh, which output will be taking as an input for our structural design of foundations right so uh, in this particular lecture we are not going to basically discuss regarding the uh, uh, soil design of uh, uh, exact soil design of our foundations right calculation of bearing capacity calculation of uh, uh, pile capacity okay uh, all these things or you can say uh, the c5 uh, analysis all these things we are not going to discuss but we are going to just see what are the things uh, are being given in the soil report and as a structural engineer what are the things we need to see from there so here you can see a different uh, a different level we have a different uh, uh, we can say type of soil so initially to understand the uh, surface uh, condition of the particular plot uh, trial pits are being done and uh, just to understand what type of soil is there at the uh, top surface of the particular plot but obviously there are uh, uh, other methods like uh, standard penetration test uh, is being done or you can say plate load test also being done to find out the bearing capacity of the soil so those things uh, need to be done otherwise we will not be able to understand the actual behavior as a as soil is a very complex uh, material and uh, uh, understand understanding its behavior because it's, it's always changing so uh, understanding its behavior correctly uh, is very important so we will uh, keep this thing uh, for the geotechnical engineers and for whatever input we'll be getting from uh, their report will be using uh, that for our structural design of foundations right so obviously before designing the foundation uh, uh, or you can say before performing the structural design of foundation it is very important to discuss with the geotechnical engineer available uh, or you can say if anything if there is any doubt regarding the geotechnical report or understanding of the geotechnical report so it is very important to discuss with the uh, geotechnical engineer who is available with you uh, then only uh, we should proceed uh, to the foundation design or you can say structural design of foundation right so as i said the first and foremost thing before jumping into foundation design is the geotechnical investigation and if we do not have the geotechnical, geotechnical investigation data available with us then we will not be able to uh, you can say proceed for the structural design of foundation systems because we will not be able to decide also what type of foundation we should use okay so now uh, if you see that what are the objectives uh, behind the geotechnical testing so the first thing that i have mentioned is the selection of project site so uh, many of you may say that why this selection of project site is uh, you can say being uh, governed by geotechnical study right because uh, initially what we understand that whatever project we uh, we can say create suppose we are making a uh, you can say a, a, a building structure or you can say one pla uh, apartment building so we will be uh, needing or we will be seeing which area it is whether people will be willing to take uh, the i can say apartments at that, at that particular area whether the facilities are available surrounding the in the surrounding area okay suppose we are making a plant structure so whether availability of water availability of raw material all these things are very uh, governing uh, you can say criteria for selecting a uh, project site but also the geotechnical uh, testing is very important or a soil investigation is very important why because suppose we have two three options of uh, uh, suppose uh, we have one plot and this is plot number one we have another plot plot number two we have another plot plot number three so in this plot we will be uh, making multiple structures for our particular project right so suppose uh, in 
we have three options available with us now we need to choose and uh, regarding uh, which particular plot we need to uh, you can say uh, we need to be acquired so obviously when we have chosen these three plots obviously we have seen the other criteria available in all the three plots but in this case why soil investigation is important because suppose in the plot number one the soil uh, the subsurface uh, is so uh, bad that in most of the cases we need to go for piling and in, in particular uh, suppose the uh, project site 2 or you can say the option 2 uh, in few areas we need to, we may have to go for piling for heavy structures but in most of the cases we may go with the uh, open foundations or you can say uh, 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 you can say isolated or raft or you can say whatever shallow foundations available with us and in the third case uh, if you see that there suppose the soil is so good or you can say the surface soil is uh, so uh, the bearing capacity of the soil is so good that we can go with the open foundations only or shallow foundations only there is no need of pile foundations now among these three whichever is giving us the uh, you can say uh, obviously when you are going to construct the pile it is going to cost you more when you are uh, if you compare with the open foundations or shallow foundations right so in this case we will go with the site which is uh, okay uh, for us which is uh, you can say costing us less in terms of the foundation system also though many of the uh, uh, cases people do not check that okay most of the cases people just check the other criteria and do not check what are the soil conditions initially while selecting the project site but in many cases it is being checked also so that the uh, the total cost of the uh, you can say uh, project can be reduced in in terms of uh, you can say optimizing the foundation system also right so uh, this is one particular case but in most of the cases you in the real world you may not be seeing that this is a governing criteria because many of the people may not be choosing this as a criteria for selecting the project site but this is the concept that i believe that uh, one one particular uh, uh, project team should see also this particular like which uh, foundation system because obviously the type of foundation is also going to affect the uh, the structure above also right so uh, and it is going to uh, affect the cost also uh, uh, you can see uh, if you see the overall cost of the structure right next thing is groundwater table so when you are investigating the uh, soil surface or whatever is there in the different layers of soil and obviously we'll be also checking the groundwater table like suppose we have different levels of uh, you can say uh, uh, soil and uh, at particular depth we found that here we have the we have the groundwater table so suppose we are uh, this is at uh, suppose 5 meter depth okay so if we are uh, making suppose open foundations or shallow foundations at 2 meter 3 meter depth or 1.5 meter depth so suppose this is my bottom foundation for my foundation system so in this case the uh, this soil uh, groundwater table is not going to affect my uh, foundation system okay so basically uh, if, if if my foundation system is there so this groundwater table will cause uh, uplift pressure though in our while designing the foundation uh, system though the even even though the groundwater table is below uh, uh, much below my uh, foundation uh, but we will be using uh, the uh, uplift force considering the full flooded condition but uh, uh, we need to see which area it is suppose it is a very desert area where there is hardly any chance of having uh, you can say uh, 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 high flood level ab 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 above than your uh, you can say existing ground level or you can say fgl finished ground level so in that case there is no need of taking this uplift pressure unless or until you have the groundwater table very close to your bottom foundation right so and again uh, uh, this the the you can say minerals present in the groundwater like uh, chloride sulfate is also going to affect the uh, material that which uh, we'll be using for the foundation like concrete and the steel also right so that that's why the presence of groundwater table or the depth of groundwater table is very uh, knowing the depth of groundwater table is very important so in that case geodynamical investigation is the only way we where through which we can find out uh, at what depth we have the groundwater table right so this is one case uh, one objective to uh, for the uh, soil investigation uh, then we have the properties of soil so obviously how the uh, soil is going to behave to know that we need to do the 
different properties of soil so the basically the governing properties that will be uh, if you see if you talk about the structural design or structural uh, part of the foundation design so in that case the properties that we are going to uh, be very uh, uh, you can say very much depending on so are those are the chemical and uh, i guess the mechanical properties so if i talk about the mechanical properties it is also uh, a call it is also called as, as shear parameters so shear parameters so basically the shear parameters you, you might have heard about the c and phi these two are uh, uh, in, in 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 case of uh, you can say uh, soil mechanics c and phi are called the shear parameters so these are my mechanical uh, uh, these two things can give us the mechanical property of the soil like when we'll be calculating the bearing capacity of the soil this c and phi is very important parameters using those only we'll be uh, getting the bearing capacity of the soil so we'll come come to this particular point let us also see the chemical property so in case of chemical property the sulfate sulfate chloride the presence of sulfate chloride or you can say the ph level of the groundwater is also uh, you can say an important uh, you can say uh, parameter uh, for as we will be uh, you can say constructing the uh, foundation out of concrete so uh, if you see in is456 uh, there are uh, you can if i just open is456 so in table number uh, four the requirement of concrete exposed to sulfate attack so when the concrete is exposed to sulfate okay so maybe it is dissolved in soil or groundwater you need to see this particular table where the requirements uh, of the cement a special cement mix uh, is provided uh, per kg kg per meter cube how much what type of cement and uh, you can say how much amount it we need to use so this is given in table number four of is 456 2000 then if you see the chlorides in concrete so in that case uh, also you can see the cement water uh, ratio water cement ratio uh, required for specific uh, I guess exposure condition and uh, in table 6 you can see the sorry the table 7 if you see the limits of chloride content in concrete okay so this table also is going to be uh, referred when uh, you can say uh, when we will be choosing the material that we will be constructing with uh, the foundation you will be constructing with right so when you will be making the design mix so keeping this mind because uh, the soil investigation report will be recommending you in case the amount of the chloride and sulfate is crossing the limits that is defined in is456 so if these limits are being crossed then in that case the investigation soil investigation uh, report will be recommending you uh, that which table you need to refer or what type of uh, you can say design mix you need to be uh, considered so in good soil investigation reports these things are being mentioned actually otherwise uh, the limits will be mentioned or it will be written that the limits are much higher than uh, the uh, permissible or lower than the permissible so in that case accordingly you need to choose the uh, construction material right so uh, so that's why chemical properties are very important okay to know the chemical property of the uh, soil when on which you are going to construct the foundation it is very important now uh, let us jump into this mechanical properties uh, how this c5 is why this c5 is very important so i'm going to give you a very brief i'm not going to discuss the uh, you can say foundation engineering part because it is a totally purely foundation engineering part so you need to uh, those who wish to learn that you can always refer the foundation engineering lectures in different uh, platforms like NPTEL and all okay so these are the very good platforms for foundation learning the foundation engineering or you can refer different uh, books of different authors so it is a huge topic actually so i am not going to touch this particular thing here we are going to discuss only the structural design part right so just just to explain the fundamentals so if you see suppose this is my foundation or this is uh, just just a block on on which we are applying some load or i will just draw accordingly suppose this is my column and i have applied some load on this so this load is going to be distributed so like this right and where it will be transferring this it will be transferring it on the ground 
okay suppose this is my soil so this is my ground okay this is my foundation and this is my low develop okay right so when the load is being applied on the soil uh, through the foundation pad so what will happen a wedge like uh, or you can say wedge will be generated below the just below the foundation okay the wedge shape uh, on the on the uh, on the soil actually so what is what is actually happening uh, when load is being applied the soil particles present in this particular zone is being compressed and uh, it, this particular zone in this shape it is being or you can say becoming rigid so this is a very rigid zone okay so first it will happen like this then the load is being used or you can say the when you keep uh, loading this particular foundation uh, uh, then in that case what will happen this wedge shape will try to push the surrounding soil okay it will try to push the surrounding soil so in that case what will happen uh, this the soil which is uh, beside uh, available beside this particular wedge shape so it will try to it will try to move like this and it will create a zone like this okay it will try to create a zone like this right so first the wedge shape which is a rigid zone then it is you keep uh, loading this particular uh, you can say foundation so in that case this wedge will be pushing the uh, surrounding soil so it will try to go up like this to pile up at the above of the and uh, it will create a zone like this so these zones are basically known as shear zones okay so this is my zone one this is my zone two okay then again if you keep on loading this foundation then this zone will try to push the surrounding soil and it will create another you can say zone like this right another zone like this so this is my uh, uh, zone 3 i would say this is my zone 3 it will be something like this actually this is my zone 3 okay so uh, basically what is happening i am applying a load the the soil uh, here is being compressed it is becoming rigid and, and it is creating a wedge shape then when the additional load is coming this particular zone is uh, i can say trying to push the uh, surrounding soil and that means this particular foundation is basically settling down by settling down like this right because the soil is being removed and this wedge shape is intact correct correct so these zones are basically known as these zones are basically known as shear failure zones okay these zones are basically known as shear failure zones so the failure of the or you can say the shear failures are you can say can be uh, 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 you can say classified into three types first is the general shear one is the general shear okay uh, next is local shear and the third one is punching okay punching shear right so what is the same phenomena actually will be happening so what is happening suppose uh, if we talk about the first case which is the general shear uh, we have foundation we are loading it and the load is being applied on the ground okay the wedge shape is being created the wedge is being created actually okay and the the surrounding soil of this wedge is you can say piling up like this okay suppose this is my uh, uh, ground level so the surrounding soil is piling up like this so when the settlement of the foundation is happening like this and the i can say due to this particular phenomena the surrounding soil is piling up so it is moving upwards if you see 
that is moving it's try to move upwards so in that case the, in that case this failure of the soil surface is known as the general shear failure okay i'm 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 uh, giving this description very i uh, can say generally there are many deep concepts behind these things so i'm not going to discuss this i'm just giving a very overview of the whole whole uh, particular thing so it is general shear failure correct this is a general shear failure right so when what type of soil can behave like this so the soil which are less compressible okay the soil which are less compressible less compressible suppose we have a spring if you try to compress it and it it is suppose more compressible so it will compress it will be like this but if it is less compressible what will happen it will try to bend like this right so the same thing is happening here as the soil is less compressible so it is not actually compressing but it is going up as you are taking its position it is going up okay so the soil which are uh, less compressible so in, uh, in nature so in that case what will happen general shear failure we can see the second thing the second thing if you see the local shear so the same phenomena suppose load is applied and we have the ground the wedge is created now in this kind when the uh, you can say uh, the soil is medium compressible or you can say intermediate uh, compressible in nature so i will write it as medium compressible so not very hard not very soft okay in the medium state so in that case what will happen when the load is being applied so this uh, the 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 soil uh, surrounding this instead of piling up instead of going up what will happen the lateral movement of the soil will be happening okay so the soil will be moving laterally so small amount of pile you may see but most of the soil will be moving laterally and this zone will be created okay okay so when and 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 this way this this foundation is going to be settled like this right so this failure or like i said this shear failure is known as local local shear failure or local shear okay the third one the third one if we talk about is the punching okay so what is punching suppose you just punch a paper or you just punch a sponge what will happen what will happen the, your hand is going to uh, you can say if, you, if it is a paper if you punch on it it will uh, you can say tear the paper and it will go through right so the same thing here also we have uh, applied the load the load is applied here we have the soil surface here suppose okay as the and, and and this kind of phenomena or this kind of be i can say shear is happening when the uh, soil is more compressible so i will write it as more compressible in nature so basically what will happening uh, when load is applied it will directly you can say punch through like this it will directly punch through so in that case there will be no uh, there will be no movement of the soil because the soil is so soft in nature or so compressible in nature that even without disturbing the uh, the surrounding soil it can sink the foundation okay so this we call it as punching shear call it as punching shear as an example uh, suppose if you go to the uh, sea beach okay where the sand is there okay in the sea beach the sand and it is densely uh, you can say dense sand right so if you try to punch the uh, the sand in the sea beach what will happen suppose i have tried to punch it will try to pile up like this and your hand will go through like this 
but if you just see the piled up uh, sand construction uh, for construction purpose when we keep it uh, in our home and this particular thing is not that much dense okay so in that case if you punch what will happen this sand will not try to pile but it will try to move side by side and it will your hand will go through right so the same type of soil but one is dense another one is lesser uh, less dense so when it is dense that means it is less compressible so that's why we got the general shear failure here but when it is more compressible or media compressible the the you can say when you punch through it will try to either laterally move the soil or it will directly sink so this in this case you will get the local shear or punching shear right so why these things are happening why the foundation is or how this particular thing is being hap uh, being happened so if you see here we are talking about shear failure so how this shear is coming into a uh, picture so if you see this is my foundation okay this is my foundation we applied load it is being distributed through this foundation pad and it is being applied on the ground and we say that the wedge is being created here below the foundation pad right so basically to sink or to to for for this foundation to settle uh, what is actually happening if you see suppose this foundation is settled so what is being happened we have suppose if i just uh, draw a cross section of this area wherever suppose somewhere here so we have this soil particles we have this soil particles like this right we have the soil particles so the the cohesion force or the bond between the soil particles if this foundation want to settle or sink so in that case the bond between the soil particles or the cohesive force between the soil particles we need to break it we need to break it right then only the, the the soil particles will be separated and in that case the shear failure will occur between the uh, uh, in this particular soil area and thus foundation will tend to settle or uh, sink right so these cohesive force the extent of cohesive force or you can say the amount of force required to break this uh, you can say uh, uh, cohesive force between the foundation uh, uh, sorry between the soil particles we call it as coefficient of coefficient of cohesion okay or cohesion coefficient cohesion coefficient okay cohesion coefficient and this is what we name it as c which is my shear parameter one of the shear parameters right so along this along this plane along this plane this cohesion or the shear is acting actually okay and it is try to break the cohesion between the soil uh, soil particles right and it is the amount of force required to break it okay uh, this is being defined by the cohesion of coefficient or c okay now to define this cohesion of coefficient or to define the extent of force we also require the angle that this particular plane is created with the horizontal also you can see this angle same thing actually so the angle which this particular plane is creating with the horizontal so this angle we call it as phi okay or this this particular uh, uh, parameter also has a has a uh, I can say technical name so we basically call this phi as the friction uh, you can say uh, angle of uh, friction failure so I would write it as is this equal to angle of friction failure right so when the load is being applied on the foundation from the superstructure the weight shape is created and through this plane the shear is being uh, i can say uh, 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 the shear is uh, shear of or, or the shear failure is occurring okay and to define the shear failure 
we need to have these two coefficients or the two parameters which we call shear parameters or the mechanical properties which is c and phi the cohesion coefficient and the angle of uh, friction failure right so these two things can define the shear failure of the soil right so to get the bearing capacity of the soil how these two parameters are required actually so if you see that this soil uh, the foundation is applying load on the ground and we have this wedge shape uh, which is or you can say through which we can uh, see the c and phi parameters okay thus the the c is acting along this plane so now there is a downward force through the from this wedge right so this is my applied load suppose on the on the uh, soil surface and to resist this force there are three components which is being applied actually first component is actually so if you if you just consider suppose here we have soil and suppose this is a rigid zone okay this is a rigid zone doesn't suppose do not consider this as a soil suppose it is a rigid zone we have surrounding soil here so this surface if you just consider this as a suppose retaining one okay and we have a soil here okay so uh, uh, now it is actually what is happening here if you see what is happening here the due to the applied pressure so soil is in this direction soil is here but the pressure is acting towards the soil okay the pressure is acting towards the soil so if the pressure is acting towards the soil so this pressure we call it as passive earth pressure right passive earth pressure so similar kind of passive earth pressure is being applied on this particular surface so it will be like this so i will write it as the first one passive earth pressure okay passive earth pressure so this is the first resisting force because you will be applying the load obviously there will be a reaction right there will be resisting force to resist this uh i can say settlement right so first resisting force is the passive earth pressure what will be the second case what will be the second case as we have uh, told that the cohesion is acting right there is cohesive force between the uh, soil particles so again when i'll just remove it i'll draw it again so the load is applied so there will be a cohesion force or cohesive force from the surrounding soil and it will be acting as a udl or you can say uh, surcharge load like this i would i won't use surcharge load because it will be a different component the third component which is the surcharge so this is my cohesion force cohesion force of the soil particles acting as the resistance against the uh, downward uh, you can say the load coming from the above right this is the second case and third case is the surcharge so basically whatever you want to see from the top so if you just make it upside down so the same thing will be happening uh, is happening from the downwards also so from the downwards also due to the uh, presence of the soil surround uh, surrounding this area so we will have a surcharge force also here which is a udl in nature okay uniformly distributed throughout this plane so it will be acting uniformly okay this is my downward force so this is my surcharge okay so to resist this downward force or to resist this settlement of the foundation uh, three components are being uh, are, are acting actually as the uh, you can say resisting force or resisting element right so if you calculate these three element and combine this in one particular place then what the the the, 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 the you can say final output that you are getting is nothing but my bearing capacity 
is nothing but my bearing capacity okay so so if you do not have the two shear parameters the uh, coefficient of friction uh, sorry the uh, coefficient of cohesion and another one is the uh, coefficient of or you can say angle of friction uh, failure so these two parameters if you do not have in that case you will not be able to uh, you can say uh, 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 calculate the other three resisting force right and if you do not have these three elements then we will not be ending up with having the bearing capacity of the soil so if you do not have the bearing capacity we will not be able to uh, you can say do the perform the uh, soil design or structural design of foundation right so if you see any uh, soil uh, report the when you will be calculating the bearing capacity the c5 parameters are very important which are called the shear parameters also the settlement is one of the criteria that there are some suppose you are allowing some amount of settlement okay so uh, this is my surface so i am i am saying that i will apply this amount of settlement okay so from here to here if the foundation settle whatever value it is there is no issue okay after this after this the foundation should not settle so if i restrict the foundation settlement in that case what will be the bearing capacity right so because at this particular point if i want to restrict the settlement of the foundation then also i will be getting a bearing capacity that if this much capacity or this much reaction the foundation can or resisting force the the soil can uh, generate in that case settlement will not be happening settlement will be zero but if i say that uh, the settlement will be happening up to a after that the foundation should not settle then what amount of uh, you can say uh, bearing capacity or resisting force we need to require so this also one governing criteria which is my settlement which is settlement right so first is from shear parameter or i i would write it as from shear failure second thing is from settlement bearing capacity will be calculated from both for both the cases and whichever is giving the lowest value of bearing capacity that will be considered for my design purpose or that will be considered as the uh, i can say ultimate bearing capacity or uh, after multiplying some factor on it we will be getting the same bearing, net safe bearing capacity of the uh, foundation okay and that bearing capacity will be using for our structural design of foundations also right so in the soil report these two things will be given first for the uh, shear parameter and another one is the settlement parameter then there will be a recommended value which is the lowest of these two okay so i hope i hope this uh, this thing is uh, clear how this bearing capacity so now if you want to know how the bearing capacity calculation is being done so you need to you need to uh, you can say refer is uh, six four i think six four zero three r is six four zero three uh you can say 1981 right so it is giving us the procedure to for bearing capacity calculation for bearing capacity estimation okay and uh, the testing that we are doing which is uh, the standard penetration test most of the cases there are other tests also uh, if i just talk about the spt or standard penetration test for that if you want to know the process of spt in that case we will be referring is 2131 so these codes you will be requiring if you want to learn about the uh, the soil design of the foundations right there are other codes also for other methods so you you may just search in bis website and you will be getting those codes very easily right so now now uh, once we get the bearing capacity of the uh, uh, soil in that then we'll be we can proceed for designing the foundation or you can say to perform the structural design or soil design of the foundation what is soil design when i'm talking about soil design it is nothing but the how much area of foundation we need to we need uh, to require to restrict the uh, you can say pressure that is coming out or the load that is coming from the above uh, see the load will be applying from from the top 
and there will be a reaction right so this reaction we are called we are calling it as bearing bearing pressure and this bearing pressure should not cross the bearing capacity right if it is crosses the bearing capacity then we cannot or you can say we cannot uh, say that this foundation is stable because this foundation will be sinking in that case we will be having a particular value of bearing capacity that means the found the soil can take this amount of uh, load after that the shear failure will occur and it will it will be sinking right or it will be settling down uh, so in that case in that case whatever reaction that is applying this reaction should be less than or equal to the bearing capacity it should not cross the bearing capacity so to restrict the bearing capacity or the pressure from the top obviously we will be increasing the area right to because if you see the pre, uh, the uh, force by area if you do that that is what the pressure is right so we will be increasing the area so in that case force will be reduced or the pressure also be reduced uh, right so soil design means sizing of the foundation how much area do we, do we need to require to uh, restrict the bearing pressure less than or equal to the bearing capacity right and structural design due to this reaction whatever moment shear that is that we that is being generated in the foundation pad that is that is uh, that we need to uh, found out find out and we need to you can say provide the thickness and reinforcement on the foundation system that is about all about the structural design of foundation okay so whatever uh, i have talked about is is all about the shallow foundation now the pile foundation will be uh, discussing a bit later now first of all we will be discussing the shallow foundations only so now uh, uh, what i wanted to say that once you understand the fundamentals uh, like uh, what are the things we need to see i hope you are, it is pretty clear that how what are the things we need to see in the soil report now okay so from that now we can proceed with the structural design of foundations right now there are three additional things i have added here and that uh, the objective of geotechnical testing first is the slope stability analysis now see uh, suppose we uh, have the natural ground level somewhere here okay and uh, the flood level is bit higher from the natural ground level so we have decided so this is my high flood level this is my natural ground level so what we have decided suppose we are going to construct a road okay we are going to construct a road so what we have decided that we will be creating embankment here like this we will be creating the embankment here and we will keep the road above the hfl which is the high flood level just one scenario i am talking about okay so this is my top of road okay top of road and this is my embankment okay pardon my writing please uh, so when we are creating this embankment so if you see we are creating a slope okay so it is pretty uh, even if you do not understand engineering suppose so even if you do not understand engineering uh, we have this understanding that if we keep make this slope steep like this what will happen it will be less stable if we make the slope like this it will be more stable now now up to what extent we can make it steep or up to what extent we have limit or you can say we have uh, uh, open hand to uh, make this uh, you can say slope more uh, uh, you can say the slope increase the slope of this uh, slope angle right so we cannot in some cases we may not be able to make the slope with higher uh, slope angle we may not be able to make it uh, or we have to make it more steep okay so in that case in that case analysis because this slope will be made up of soil only right and the type of soil is also going to be a governing criteria be, uh, on this particular slope or stability of this particular slope so when you are making this slope when you are making this slope okay if it is suppose more steep and uh, depending on the soil properties if lining of lining of the slope is required if we need to provide anchor to make it stable this analysis is very important otherwise what will happen once the load is coming on this soil this slope will be the slope will be sorry uh, what will happen this slope will be coming down and it will be totally damaged 
it will be totally damaged so to make the slope stable what are the requirements whether we need to take additional precautions or additional uh, things to make it stable or whether a bit high slope can make it easily uh, stable without any additional thing so those analysis are being done in the uh, slope stability okay so it's not about only embankment even in case of uh, structural you can say projects also uh, structural projects means suppose the building projects or one uh, plant uh, you can say structure you are making and you are making a bit uh, upper from the angel you are making some embankment or uh, you can say creating some slope uh, side by side for other, different other reasons so the stability of the slope we need to know and the properties of the soil is also a very important uh, thing while uh, finding out the stability of the slope right so in that case slope stability analysis is done this is also one of the uh, soil investigation part of soil investigation deep excavation though we are not going to discuss this in, in this particular course but uh, just just to give you one basic idea uh, all of you may know already uh, suppose we are uh, going to construct one building here okay and we have some underground facilities here and we are going to make the raft here right now this is the current building to be constructed to be constructed current building which is going to be constructed now here already a existing structure is there so currently the soil is like this but when you are going to construct the building beside so if you want to make the underground and the foundation here so you have to make the excavation like this right you are going to make the excavation like this so when you are going to make the excavation like this the load of this particular uh, building coming from this building will act as surcharge for this particular I will not write here for this particular uh, you can say excavation so this phase will be subjected to this surcharge load and if there is no resisting media provided what will happen this will come down and will not be able to make this excavation and as this will come down also it will make this particular building to settle and maybe it will also collapse right so whenever you're going to do this kind of deep excavation you first of all we need to know what is the type of soil how the soil is going to behave and then we need to create some stability measure to uh, we need to provide some uh, something to make this particular slope or make this particular excavation stable so in some cases you may provide diaphragm wall which is the rcc wall so it is diaphragm wall or maybe you can provide sheet piles steel uh, sheets we call it as sheet piles or maybe rcc piles closely connected to each other rcc piles so if you provide these now lateral analysis and design of these elements also being done for the soil pressure coming on this the surcharge due to the uh, you can say side by side building coming on this and taking those we need to design these elements and then only we can construct this and then we can start the you can say excavation step by step right so so what is happening that uh, and also if you if you if you suppose provide some pile here and uh, if you want to make this pile stable laterally suppose due to the lateral force it is so high that the it is becoming very economic so in that case you may have to do anchorage also okay some anchor uh, rod you have to put and you have to make grout here so to make it laterally stable so all these measures we need to see and this thing is not only the work of structural designer engineer it is also a work of geodynamical engineer so both the engineering uh, disciplines we need, need to be uh, need to sit together and decide or design the excavation of this particular deep excavation okay so there is a huge concept behind this excavation there is a separate uh, engineering subject which is excavation engineering 
uh, available in, in, in different course in masters or phd so uh, we are not going to discuss this here in this particular course just to give you a brief idea that soil investigation is required in every case without that we cannot decide anything we as a structural engineer we cannot decide anything because soil is a very uh, it is a very i can say uh, uncertain uh, uh, you can say the behavior of the soil is very uncertain so without having proper idea how it is going to behave we are not we are not uh, or say will not be able to uh, identify what sort what sort of load or what sort of force it is going to apply on our structural elements and we cannot be uh, uh, so we won't be able to design those structural elements for that right so that's why geotechnical investigation is part and parcel of any project in terms of i can say foundation design or excavation design or any kind of underground uh, facilities that we need to design geotechnical investigation or soil investigation is very important i hope it is clear uh, uh, to all of you now if i just jump into one soil report i have a simple soil report so this is a simple soil report i just had to uh, cover up the client and project name for the confidentiality so there will be contents and uh, there will be introduction okay i will not show you the names and all uh, so you can see here there are different boreholes that is being done okay as i said in different locations different boreholes the termination depth means up to what depth these holes are uh, done actually so you can see the 10 meter up 10 meter depth at different boreholes the you can say availability of uh, groundwater table so it is also uh, mentioned here then uh, the general geology of the uh, particular area is being explained the map of the area okay and then the exploration the soil exploration or soil testing or the site uh, experiment that is done so it is explained here the uh, standard penetration test is being done then the field uh, work what are the things you can see what are the tests is being done uh, boring and drilling work and collection of samples leveling and packing and uh, the finally the standard uh, penetration test spt then the lab test different uh, you can say 14 different tests are being done for finding out the different parameters of the soil okay uh, then you can see the percentage of rock and uh, all these things are available here okay uh, definition of different uh, rocks the procedure for spt standard penetration test n value calculation okay correction of n values from the spt groundwater table the you can say presence of groundwater table is mentioned here all these things you need to see actually while designing the uh, foundation laboratory test what are the tests is being done and the explanation of that okay okay fine the bore hole bore lock so this bore lock will give you idea about at what level what type of soil is there so you can see here uh, the different soils first one is the filled up soil then the stratum one we have steep or very steep reddish silty clay then we have hard uh, uh, it's a reddish silty clay then we have dense to very dense yellowish gray uh, silty medium coarse and sand and then we have completely and highly weathered rock maybe right highly weathered sedimented rock okay so these are the different levels at different levels what are the type of soil in different bore holes so this bore log is giving you this idea that what on what type of soil bed you are going to construct your foundation right then uh, the description of different strata now the foundation part is coming so the bearing capacity calculation okay so you can see the first thing from the n values we are getting is the c and the phi values okay so from the cn5 value determination of bearing capacity as per is 6403 as i said so uh, i'll just then then the settlement calculation and after that what is the bearing capacity for the settlement criteria so recommended LR bearing capacity is 4.50 ton per meter square and then we have this table for different size of footing at different depths what is the ultimate bearing capacity what is the net safe bearing capacity okay so uh, what what is this safe bearing capacity that is one this ultimate bearing capacity after the calculation uh, whatever we are getting if you divide it for with some factor maybe 2.5 or 1.5 it will be written actually so then you will be getting this net safe bearing capacity right so safe bearing capacity then uh, uh, wh what is the amount of settlement you have got for to find out this uh, particular thing so 
for 69 settlement you got 10.42 then allowable bearing pressure now settlement criteria if you see for 25 mm settlement we got the settle uh, you can say bearing capacity of 10 and for 40 mm settlement we also got 10 so this is for 1 by 1 1 meter by 1 meter foundation pad at 1.5 to 2 meter depth okay so this way uh, this is the shear parameters and this is the settlement criteria so whichever is less obviously this settlement criteria one is less here so we'll be taking the lesser one actually it is not very clear here there will be uh, in some investigation reports they will be written clearly uh, this is the recommended one from the, uh, like it will be written this is the bearing capacity from shear criteria this is the bearing capacity from the uh, settlement criteria for this amount of settlement and uh, later it will, be, it will be given the recommendation this is the recommended bearing capacity for this amount of settlement okay because in in case of shear criteria also there will be some amount of settlement right so the the lowest one will be uh, given actually so you can see different boreholes you need to see in the plan uh, on which borehole zone you are going to construct your foundation and what will be the tentative size of your foundation from that you will be designing the uh, i can say say bearing capacity for your foundation design right uh, then deep excavation deep foundation we are not going to discuss as of now we will be discussing later pile foundations all the calculation of pile capacity vertical uplift and lateral pile capacity then chemical tests so if you see i will just directly go to the conclusion here and if i just see here yeah so if you see comment on the chemical nature of soil and groundwater so the chemical test was carried on carried out on a on a soil and water samples to determine the ph value sulfate and chloride it is seen that the values are within the permissible limits as per is 456-2000 and so no special cement will be required for foundation concrete either uh, ordinary portnell uh, portnell cement opc and uh, portland slag cement or portland pozzolona cement can be uh, used for concreting no expensive soil has been found on the site so expensive soil means when it is suppose a bit clay type of soil so what will happen if you press the soil right it is just like this suppose we have a chunk of soil and you are applying some load if you are pressing it what will happen if it is the expensive type uh, so it will expand and it will try to push the soil uh, side by side so suppose you have a backfill suppose you have done some excavation and then some soil you have take it took out from here and now you'll be backfilling this with now if it is expensive type of soil what will happen if the load is applied on this what will happen it will try to expand and try to push the foundations even uh, for suppose a retaining wall or maybe a culvert or maybe drain okay you made and in this side if the soil type is expensive type of soil then what will happen the the active pressure will be higher so in that case the moment in this wall will be very high so for the backfilling purpose expensive type of soils are not recommended okay uh, and uh, you may have to replace the expensive type of soil with different type of soil so the c and phi value or especially this phi value also uh, governing the value of active earth pressure coefficient k and passive earth pressure coefficient kp the value of k and kp also depending on the phi value right so depending on this phi value the k may increase k may decrease if the k increases the pressure will be reducing if the k sorry the k increases pressure will be increasing k reduces pressure will be reducing okay so if pressure is reducing obviously the moment will be reduced shear will be reduced so now like at every step i am saying that these shear parameters are very important whenever you are dealing with some structure and soils right so i hope you understood that uh, how the this particular things or the shear criteria settlement criteria is being inc incorporated in the soil report so the thing that we need to uh, see in the soil report while going for a shallow foundation design specifically uh, deep foundation will, we will come up later on so is this particular table and the final recommendation okay finally i don't know whether it is given in this particular uh, uh, soil report let me see it should be given conclusion and general recommendations based on the field test and uh, i can say foregoing discussion on the following summarized the subsoil is characterized by uh, a fill layer 
at top followed by stiff very stiff and clay silt after that dense to very dense okay this is the explanation of the bore uh, actually the present report deals with the geotechnical investigation findings at the location and the discussion of both aspects bearing capacity for of open foundations and pile capacity of deep foundation in the form of bore and cast in situ pile depending on the field and laboratory test results. however foundation designer may modulate uh, modulate the type of foundations and other values regarding the foundation geometry and soil design parameter to meet any specific design criteria okay so what it says uh, that you may have you may go with open and uh, pile foundation also depending on the because they have given some certain uh, bearing capacity and sizes so suppose uh, your foundation open foundation is not uh, going beyond these sizes and uh, the bearing capacity is be uh, that is being provided then in that case you may have to go with the you can say deep foundations so this kind of recommendation they have made right so you now based on your engineering judgment based on the load that you are getting from the superstructure you will be deciding what type of foundation you have to use right so you can see some uh, you can say photos of the you can say the tests being done field tests right fine so uh, this is it for the introductory lecture i just wanted to make you understand that how important the soil investigation is and how important it is to discuss this particular thing with the uh, geotechnical specialist or the the soil engineer before jumping into the structural design of foundation because design of foundation is a very critical topic it is not only depending on the structural design part but it is also depending on the soil because we will be constructing it on the soil so behavior of the soil will be governing uh, in the in in terms of behaving of behavior of the foundation right and stability of the foundation so in our course we'll be mainly dealing with the structural design of uh, foundations okay based on the inputs that we got from the geotechnical investigation right so this is the final uh, statement that i have made now uh, i will just show you uh, i think most of you have seen this but again this is my this is the syllabus for this particular course so advanced study in structural design of foundations as per is code we are expecting 80 plus hours of uh, i can say course content on this particular course it will be a uh, you can say a pre recorded course with uh, two years of access from the day of uh, you can say your enrollment and it may extend if required in case suppose some contents we have not uploaded we got late so if it is from our side we will be extending it on request right uh, tentative syllabus you can just have a look i will just uh, scroll down one by one and i will also upload this particular pdf in the course uh, content so that you can also see this before i guess joining the course so this is the tentative syllabus will be dealing with majorly with safe and manual design and also in few cases we'll be uh, showing the things in the stat pro software also right so you can see here okay so all these things we'll be learning here and this this particular report or you can say syllabus i'll be uploading in the course content and it will be open for all so that uh, even before joining the you can see the course curriculum first and you can uh, you can say uh, you can say make your mind whether you want to join it or not fine so thank you uh, we'll see you in the uh, uh, in the upcoming lectures of this particular course i hope you will be enjoying it th this course and you'll be learning a lot from this course even i will be learning a lot while making this course because i need to study a lot before uh, making uh, the lectures for all of you right so thank you and see you in the upcoming lectures